The first time I saw a blue poppy was on a trade magazine and it was right on the cover and it was just so blue and so vibrant. I really enjoy watching visitors come in and see those flowers. Um, but I think because they're, they're so rare, they, a lot of people may know about them but not get the chance to see them. I always hear how much the guests love these and they're always taking pictures and it's the only place that you're able to see these on display. It seems to have a real draw from, for the photography part of it to get the perfect picture of one of those blue flowers. I think the blue color of the flowers makes these poppies so special that it was like, how is this even possible in nature? <laughs> I'm Jim Harbage and I lead the Floriculture and Conservatory team here at Longwood Gardens. I'm Patty Stefanik. I'm a senior grower at Longwood Gardens. Uh, I grow a lot of the seasonal pot crops for the conservatory and in the gardens. So the blue poppy is a perennial. These are occurring in the Himalayan areas, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, on the border between India and Tibet. You know, when I think of the Himalayas, I just have this picture of snow and mountains and freezing cold. But we have to kind of remember that if you think of latitude, it's about the same as Orlando, Florida. So imagine a tall mountain range in Orlando, Florida, and that's what you're looking at with Mechanopsis. And there are these alpine meadows at those high altitudes, very moist. They get good rain during that uh, growing season, which is pretty short. When we receive the plants, they are about a year old. We have to put them into a dormancy in order to initiate the flowering. When we receive them, we unwrap them and we pot them up into our soil. After they are potted up, we will put them onto carts and then we'll push them into a cooler, which is set at 35 degrees, and we leave them in there for nine weeks um, at the least. After those nine weeks, we bring them out into a greenhouse where the temperature ranges between 35 and 45 degrees. We use these additional grow lights on them to increase the amount of light that, they, that they'll get because we're growing them during short days and kind of low light intensity time of the year here, which is different than their native bright summer sunlight. So we add that light in there to really make them as strong a plant as we can and we get the best flower size out of them. Once I start to see color crack on the buds, we will start loading them up, um, get them on our box truck and deliver them straight to the conservatory. The way we display the Mechnopsis, we, because their display life is fairly short, uh, we want to maximize it. So we'll put them in the conservatory uh, planting beds and they'll be mixed in so they really kind of stand up above some shorter material but we can spread them out a bit that way and it does somewhat simulate if you were to see them in a meadow which is where they grow naturally. If I found these in nature and had no idea what they were I would be astounded. They're just incredible plants and their color is unparalleled. I think one of the greatest sort of rewards I've gotten over the years with the Mechanopsis is having that opportunity to take a plant that was pretty obscure and rare and unusual, develop it into a display that we can put in our conservatories consistently year after year after year so that people who might never see it anywhere else get that opportunity to, to see something that, that is as special as the Mechanopsis.